Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, September 14th, 2018. It is 2.14 p.m. Eastern Time as I'm starting this video. I wasn't planning to do a market update video today unless I saw something worth noting. Uh, nothing nothing too compelling, but uh, again, enough enough so far today to, to mention what, what I've seen in the charts and, and what to, more importantly, what to look for uh, maybe into the close today, but uh, probably more likely into next week. So here's the QQQ 15-minute chart that I've been highlighting recently, and uh, there's that downtrend line, the 182.65 level, which we took out gapped above uh, yesterday and uh, you can see traded in that range now again uh, I think in the last video I updated here I mentioned uh, 185 184.85 a level where I expected a pull back and at least to uh, come in and test the bottom of the gap uh, put on a little short position there and that and that's what happened we hit that uh, perfectly you can see the gap backfill right there I'm sorry not backfill test of the top of the gap and so that's what happened all day yesterday we traded in that range so pretty much the high which again by the way was not just a uh, uh, price resistance. I had resistance there at 184.85. I, I tweaked that line a hair to come in since that uh, chart I, I first posted, I think, on Wednesday uh, because we had this. This is the reaction low right here, uh, 184.85 on this red candle. I had sort of just eyeballed that line before. So that's the resistance line. And you can see, uh, coincidentally or not, I believe not, uh, that comes in almost perfectly with a 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. It's uncanny how often when you put up Fib retracements uh, on, on moves, whether it's an up move or down move, what it did here is off the recent highs in QQQ down to the lows, there's your FIB line. And you can see the, the FIB pre-fill here. So we hit that 61.8, which is a, you know, one of the common, commonly watched Fib, Fibonacci retracement levels. And so, so far that's contained things. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, we're not going to go up through it. It just means until this point, at this point in time, at least, uh, that contained the bounce. And it didn't just contain it once. You can see all day yesterday and all day today on several attempts. This is a 15 minute chart. So you have one, two, three, four, you know, almost a half dozen candles failed at that level. So you just have to recognize it as resistance for now. And the 61.8, it's not set in stone, but that tends to be about the upper end of the range. If, it, if, it's, if this is just a counter trend rally in a larger move down, uh, that still would be within the realm of a normal counter trend bounce. They usually range from about the 38.2% FIB, uh, maybe the 50 all the way up to the 61.8. So food for thought. I mean, you could put up there's next level. I think it's 78.6 is the next one that would probably come in right around here with this resistance line at 186. Uh, but bigger picture, let's not spend too much time on it. Just uh, know that that's been the recent trading range right there. Uh, today, <clears throat> now the news today was a pretty impulsive reversal off the top of that range to the bottom and into the gap. Um, most often, not all the time, but more often than not, when a gap is entered from above or below, it's backfilled. That didn't happen so far. So a little little save there um, by the bulls, and I mentioned this in the trading room that you know if we fall through there, maybe it'll be a maybe that's a suck in to get some more shorts in to try to short a backfill the gap. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, there's some still uh, right about in the midpoint of that channel. I believe I did have this line up in advance 184.27. There's reactions there, maybe some to the left, and you can see if you really look closely, and that's often the case whether it's a price channel or a trading range, uh, you can usually put a midpoint of a a price channel or a trading range and you can see that that does a pretty good job so far of uh you know acting as support or resistance uh in the middle there so uh, point being look for that is possible resistance now on this back test uh, if we get a back test and a failure there and if we ran into the gap again especially if we take out these lows today uh we'll probably go on to backfill the gap now that would be pretty uh, let's just say you know, we're still above trend, but pretty, pretty bearish if you wiped out yesterday's gains because we had a pretty impulsive move up. So uh, let's just move on. We'll watch that. Those are the levels to watch. Bottom line, punch above 184, 85 with conviction. We're probably headed higher, like I said recently in, in the video. And if we come back down in here, we're probably going to uh, come in and, and, and backfill that gap, possibly worse. Because, again, the case was made on the 60-minute chart um for a pullback here as well as a 120 minute chart and if you look this is that uptrend line in fact it's better shown here on a on a two hour chart these are 120 minute candles and let me give you the board i want there it is so here's that uptrend line off the lows in early april and we regained it yesterday so we had a breakdown which is bearish regained it which is bullish and now we're back uh well 
depends how you draw it. You know, you can tighten these things up. I just showed it to you on the 60 minute chart. See, when I come in here, there's been some sloppy trading in QQQ. I think this trend line actually comes in, grabs most of the reactions there. So we're, you know, give or take right on it. Uh, you know, like I said, you can pull it this way, you can pull it that way, um, but we're struggling with that trend line. Uh, right now, still, in spite, you know, because of yesterday's breakout, um, the onus is on the bears right now to take it back down because yesterday's breakout was puts the near term outlook as bullish. But I want to point out a few things, uh, unusual things that I see in the market before I leave QQQ. Let's just mention this. Now, this isn't the end of the world. I've seen this before over the years in trading. There was some glitches today and these candles seem legit. Some other um, traders on the site, at least one other trader mentioned seeing these uh, and I can see on different charting platforms. What I'm referring to here, it's a one minute chart, a QQQ. This is a 17 minute period. And if you zoom in real closely, it started with this candle right here at 12.01 p.m. goes all the way here to uh, uh, 12.18. So a 17 minute period. Look where the bottom of this candle was right here. It was uh, right on uh, as were all these candles. That's nearly every one minute candle there. You had a body print there and all these highs afterwards uh, came in and went right up to uh, 184.34. Uh, so obviously that's something to do with a you know heavy big trade coming through. You can see a lot of volume there. Uh, and this is where these bodies were where QQQ was for the most part trading, but these were fills or they wouldn't show here. So something's going on. A little quirk with the computer. It's not the end of the world, but I also wanted to make mention. There's that 184 levels right about in the middle, minor resistance. I pointed that out in the trading room uh, a little before starting this video. That if we bounce back today, watch this level because if we take it out, we may continue on up into the close. But if we fail here, um, and I had a comparable level in the NQE minis. Uh, we may take another jog down into the close. Either way, it's also right in the middle of those quirks right there. So I'll be interested to see what happens today. And, you know, it's Friday. Unless you had something spectacular by the close, uh, I think, you know, it's going to keep us guessing, or at least it'll keep me guessing as to whether Monday it's going to be an up day or down day. So there's not enough um, bearish or bullish price action, bullish follow through to yesterday's breakout or bearish, even though we're down in queues, it's not enough so far to say, okay, that was a failed breakout yesterday. We're going to head lower. So it's kind of a wait and see thing. Uh, a couple other things I wanted to make mention uh, is the you know, and I, once in a while you'll see this, but it, it is quite unusual. QQQ, as I just showed you, was down to, what was it, 0.29%? Let me go back as I'm doing this video, 0.28%. And unless they've caught up since I've started this video, Apple, the two biggest components of QQQ, the two biggest stocks in the world, Apple and Amazon, are both down well over 1%. Apple's down 1.32% and Amazon's down 1.12%. You don't see that often. Um, you know, as a top weighted, you know, they make up a significant part of the returns here. You can look at it good or bad. It means a lot of the smaller components are actually moving up today, holding it up. But, uh, you know, these guys we need to keep an eye on because if they break, the market breaks. That that much we know. Um, and here's Apple. I mentioned the other day we had 225.39 as a minor. Again, minor resistance level. Don't read too much into this. It's an intraday chart. We popped above it um, yesterday, but then we failed today. But we're also back testing that minor downtrend line that I, that I mentioned. So, uh, um, again, so a little bit of an obscure near-term outlook, but uh, the bigger picture too, don't forget, uh, despite whatever happened in the broad market, if you look at Apple, and sometimes you need to do this, take a you know an individual stock's technicals on face value, uh, regardless of what the market or, or whatever sector it belongs to, Apple had a... Uh, yeah, had a bearish rising wedge here, broke down, made an impulsive move down, had a so far nothing more than a kickback rally, hasn't even taken out the highs. And I think I made mention, you know, if it wants to go back to that line, it can do so and still have negative divergences in place. Sometimes you get a breakdown of a wedge and you back test it from below. Sometimes you break down, you never back test, you just keep moving lower. So we'll keep an eye on Apple. If we continue to see this into the close today, particularly Monday, um, that's not a good omen for the market. And then uh, Amazon as well, uh, severely lagging, or you know, notably, I should say. Now, I'll, I always say this, one day doesn't make a trend, so I'm trying not to read too much into it, but figured it was worth mentioning. There's Amazon down 1.14, uh, you know, several times more than the QQQ, and you don't see that often. And Amazon, like I've been saying for a while now, is in a very precarious technical uh, posture. Yes, the trend is bullish. No, there are, uh, we don't have any uh, sell signals yet on Amazon, or at least nothing concrete. We almost had a bearish engulfing candle there, but we didn't. That, that candle was a little bit above there. So really, uh, zero sell signals on Amazon. Um, but it is, 
you know, if a couple more days like this or one bad day and it could crack that trend line. And um, that would be, a uh, you know, most likely drag the market down with it. So just something to keep an eye on. All right, let's keep this one short. I'm exactly at the 10 minute mark now. Let's wrap it up uh, again. Nothing spectacular today, but there are some levels to watch. And um, my guess is, like I said, we'll probably not have an idea as to whether we're going to continue the, the, the very near term upside momentum uh, going into that next week, or if uh, yesterday's pop was just a one-off event and uh, those 60-minute divergences have more to play out before the correction is over. Uh, so uh, we'll stay tuned and, you know, barring any big fireworks into the close today, any technical changes, uh, my next update on the broad markets will continue uh, on Monday. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it and have a great weekend.